The operation of first gear would start out by putting the ring gear in place. Now, typically we might hold the rear carrier here, but in actuality what we do is we hold this number two one-way clutch because that will stop the rear carrier from turning counterclockwise. Driving the front ring gear will create an output to the output gear. Now if we don't hold the rear carrier, we notice that it turns counterclockwise. The function of that one-way clutch is to hold the carrier from turning counterclockwise. Here we can see that we will now have a first gear gear ratio because we created a reaction member by holding that rear carrier. Now for second gear, we have to hold the sun gear from going counterclockwise. We do that by the number one one-way clutch. We also hold the number two one-way clutch because it sits in the housing and is held naturally. This is second gear operation. Now for third gear and for reverse, we use the direct clutch. The direct clutch tabs right into that sun gear shell. The direct clutch is also goes into the input shaft forward clutch assembly. Those splines on the forward clutch fit right into the direct clutch and when it is activated it locks it to the input shaft. In the direct clutch there are small oil holes that are feed the oil passageway to activate that direct clutch. Direct clutch fits on the input shaft and when the oil pressure activates it, it locks the two together so they turn together. Therefore, the input shaft drives the direct clutch, which drives the sun gear. Now when we go into third gear, we're going to hold both one-way clutches, because that's how it works, but they won't be active. Then, we drive the sun gear and the front ring gear to give ourselves a one-to-one -one ratio. Now in reverse, we will also activate the direct clutch and spin the sun gear clockwise. However, we now have to hold the rear carrier so it doesn't turn clockwise. This will give us a rotation in the opposite direction. Here we can see the output gear is turning counterclockwise as we create a clockwise input on the sun gear. Now let's take a look at overdrive. Here I've marked the white mark on the intermediate shaft and on the output gear, and one on the housing. Now we're going to compare the rotation of the intermediate shaft to the actual output gear. When we apply air pressure to the overdrive brake, it will hold that overdrive sun gear and give us a reaction. We're going to see that intermediate shaft turn about three quarters of a turn to one turn of that output gear. That will give us approximately a 0.75 to 1 gear ratio. Applying air pressure into the overdrive brake, which holds the overdrive sun gear, and then turning the Simpson gear set in direct drive, such as third gear, by turning the ring gear and the sun gear at the same time. We're going to watch the output gear until it goes around one full turn. We can now see that the output gear has gone around one full turn. However, if we look at the intermediate shaft, we'll see that it went approximately three quarters of a turn, giving us that 0.75 to 1 gear ratio for overdrive.